Hello, and welcome to the Frogwatch USA Calling Calendar Tutorial. This web-based tutorial is a step-by-step -step orientation for anyone interested in frogs and toads to explore the Frogwatch USA data by displaying the data on a calendar. Use calling calendars to discover when species begin to call in your state, how the composition of calling species change in different months, and more. Frogwatch USA's calendar system is powered by FieldScope, an online data entry, mapping, and analysis platform developed by the National Geographic Society, specifically for citizen science programs like Frogwatch USA. The Frogwatch USA calling calendar tutorial will take you approximately 10 minutes to complete. You can start, stop, and return as often as needed. To begin, let's navigate to the Frogwatch FieldScope homepage and click the Graph Data button. This directs us to the graphing homepage. Here, you can explore starter graphs, which are separated under the Explore Ecology, Navigate Neighborhoods, and Calling Calendars tabs, or you can create your own from scratch. Let's explore when species are heard in a given state. You can use the starter calendar titled Species Calling by State, Michigan example, under the Calling Calendars tab, or follow this tutorial to create a similar calendar from scratch. Let's begin by clicking on the Start from the Beginning link. This page allows you to select the variables included in your graph. There are two variable types, numerical variables, and categorical variables. Numerical variables represent continuous scale data, such as temperature. Categorical variables represent non-continuous data that has been reported in categories, such as habitat type. The calendar plot requires one categorical-based variable, and we are going to select species to display in our calendar. And select the calendar plot as our graph. The calendar displays observations reported for each day over many years in the form of a pie chart. You can learn about the other types of graphs in FieldScope's Help page. To move to the next step, you can use either the Next button or the Step tabs. FieldScope does not require you to follow any order and it is possible to change between these four tabs as often as you'd like. And go back to make changes after a graph has been created. For this tutorial, we are going to follow the suggested order. Filters change the scope of the data on the graph. Four filter categories are available. You can filter by value to show only data associated with a group within a variable, such as spring peeper within species. We are going to use filter by area to show only data from sites within a defined area. Filter by date allows you to show only data within a range of dates, and filter by observer can be used to show only observations by a particular group, such as a Frogwatch USA chapter. Multiple filters can be combined. Without filters, this calendar would display all reported species and all reporting states. This amount of information is difficult for field scope to load and would be so cluttered that it would make our calendar virtually impossible to interpret. We're going to make it more meaningful by filtering by area and creating a Michigan filter. Multiple tools are available to create area filters. Today, we will use the State Boundaries tool. We can pan across the screen by clicking and dragging, and zoom in by either using the plus button in the bottom right hand corner or the scroll wheel on your mouse. Once we are close enough, clicking on Michigan will create our filter. You can change the name of the filter, but today we will use FieldScope's default. Now, let's quickly view the Define Axes and Labels step. Because only one variable can be included on a calendar, not many features are available on this page. In other graph types, this section can be used to manage how multiple variables are displayed. We could name our calendar now, but this can also be done while viewing the calendar, so let's do that. 
For this tutorial, I'm going to close the Learn More About the Analysis Tools box. The calendar may take a few moments to load, depending on the amount of data selected. First, let's change how we are viewing this calendar, because just looking at January is not very interesting, as the Frogwatch USA monitoring season officially begins February 1st. We will change the display from one month to four months and use the next button to view months where species were observed during the Frogwatch USA monitoring season. Now, let's look at the legend to learn what the colors mean in our pie charts. Each color represents an individual species. This can be a lot of information to take in at once, so we will deselect all and choose only a few species. How about spring peeper and green frog. Now we can see clearly that spring peepers have been observed primarily in the spring. And by contrast, green frogs have been observed in late spring and in the summer months. The shading within each day on the calendar represents the number of observations. The darker the color, the more observations were made on that day. Additionally, the small number in the lower right-hand corner of each calendar date provides a count of the observations on that day. An additional filter can be applied to limit the years plotted on the calendar. We can also explore the data on the graph further using the map and data table. Here, the data is depicted on a spreadsheet. This will show all the data that we have originally included in our calling calendar, including the ones we have deselected in the legend. To view data only for a selected group of species, you have to filter specifically for them under the Filter by Data tab. This table has some built-in features to explore the data. For instance, we can click the title of any column, and the table will automatically sort alphabetically or numerically based on that column. Additionally, the count button depicts details of the data, including the number of unique data points per column or the sum, average, minimum, and maximum of numerical data. You can export this table as a .csv file, which can be used in any program that reads spreadsheets, such as Microsoft Excel. We can also look at the data using the map and navigate in the same manner as we did when creating our Michigan filter. Additionally, you can zoom quickly by holding the shift key and drawing a box around the area of interest. To see the data associated with a site, we can click on a frog icon and a summary window containing the number of stations and observations represented at that point will be displayed. Click the Show in Table button to view the corresponding information in the data table. You can view the map, graph, and data table together in any combination by selecting the boxes. Simply uncheck the boxes to hide the extra map or data table if you are not interested. Finally, to save the graph, we must name it. Let's name this graph Tutorial Calendar. You can choose to click Share this graph with other FieldScope users, which will include the graph in a stream on the right-hand side of the graphing homepage. We encourage you to share any graph you believe others might find interesting. Clicking Save will now save the title and description. To save the calendar, we will click on the disk symbol. When you save the graph, it will reload exactly as you have saved it now. You will need to refresh the graph to incorporate new observations in the future. You have now completed the calendar section of the FrogWatch FieldScope tutorial. Additional tutorial information accompanies each of the starter graphs provided.